there's your idea of impressive, there's my idea of impressive, but is that impressive? Is there a concrete, is there a concrete impressive? No! Okay, it's Summer here, and because I love Serum so much, I'm going to go through a full rundown of Serum. I'm going to go through every single section of Serum in depth, and uh, I'll talk about a bit of my tips and tricks, and yeah, really analyze what's going on section by section. I'm going to be talking about importing wavetable editing and general use, matrix, global settings, LFOs, envelopes, the lot, filters, everything. And I hope you enjoy. Make sure you buy my packs. I've made shitloads of packs for Serum. Uh, all sorts of awesome presets. And just check it out on the patchbay.io. Alrighty, let's get started real quick. The logo, Serum logo. You'd think, oh, that's just a logo. Incorrect. It is a button. Right click on it. What do we get? Oh, we get a drop down menu. Um, it's allowing us to scale the interface from 50% original size to 400%. Maybe you have a really big screen, you might want to use 400%. It seems to blow up the GUI. It doesn't really scale it, I think, beyond 100%, but still, it's very handy. And it can scale in between all those numbers as well. If you go down to the bottom, down the bottom corner there, and you can drag it any size you like. It's now 206.9%. Don't forget that point 0.9. So the drop down menu includes the GUI scaling options. You can also set your default to the current scaling setting so that when you open it next time, it will be your preferred scale. There's also skin. You can also skin your serum. If you're a bit of a wanker and not making much music, then I would recommend skinning it and sitting around like a wanker. Uh, and you can set your default skin, wanker. Uh, the other thing about the logo icon is it has a little button there in the corner when that pops up when you drag over it. Now that's pretty fun. What that does is resamples whatever you've got in, in Serum and drags it out as an export anywhere you like in your door, provided that your door supports such things. Drag and drop. Let's have a look. What do we got here? We've just got a sub oscillator, blah, blah, blah. Maybe we got this. Well, well maybe we could put some uh, basic shape there and something else there. Uh, let's get a noise, just a AC hum. Let's go and let's drag that crap. And what do you know? There it is. Let's have a little look. Yep, that's it. Now, right on, right onto the sub oscillator. The sub oscillator has an enable disable button. It also has a direct out button. The direct out button bypasses the filter section. If the filter is enabled and S for sub is enabled, the filter section will be bypassed when direct out is selected. Then you've got a series of different wave shapes, like so. Uh, first, the sine wave is your typical sub bass sine wave just a sine wave. Usually my sub bass would be something like neg two, and that would be sitting right down in the lower frequencies there. Let's have a look what the sine wave in the oscillator looks like on the histogram. Oh, that's really clean. Check it out. It's your typical sine wave. It would be great for sub bass. Let's have a look. If it was lower, like minus two, that's about right for me. That's what I always choose. You can see, there you go. It's sitting nicely between 20 and 50 hertz just where the subby is. The subbies are usually split off at 80 hertz or 85 hertz so this is an ideal sub base. Just for the sake of it let's just up it by one octave and have a look. And yeah it's a neat another octave. It's a neat sine wave. That's all very nice but what if you wanted to have a little bit more harmonics from your sub base spilling and bleeding through the rest of your presets spectrum. Okay, well then you've got the option of distorted sine wave for your sub oscillator, distorted sine or clipped over driven sine wave. Let's have a look what that looks like at neg two octaves. And as you can see there, it's, in, it's added a few more partials, a few more harmonics into the picture. And that might actually give you sub bass as well as a little bit more bass in your between 100 and 500 in case your tune is being played on a system that doesn't have a subwoofer or it has a very poor bass response and a lot of people these days a lot of the new, new generation play it out of their phone don't they and they play it in really shitty systems where the bass 
sucks balls. Well, in this situation, the clipped or distorted sine wave is an excellent choice for your sub bass. But let's have a look at it higher up. And there's, look at those, look at those lovely partials, that coloration that we love to see in this day and age. I kind of look at it like uh, a gradient of, uh, so the first one is very, very clean. Next one is a little dirtier with some sub, the next, the next one is a little dirtier with some harmonics added in. Next one is the triangle. Strangely enough, if you actually change the phases of a triangle, you actually get a semicircle wave. Post a comment in the comments section. Let's discuss that. Uh, so yes, triangle, and it has a little bit more debris, a little bit more grit to it. And then we have the sawtooth. The sawtooth, quite a lot more grit. There you go. Oh, that's really popping away. It's flapping away like a cow's ass if it was farting. Or FM84's snare drums. Uh, and there we go. Look at that. That's excellent. That's really cool when you have some um, really deep, um, you might want it not so loud, but you... It adds a bit of balls to your bass presets, particularly cyberpunk style bass presets that you can see in my Serum Wave series. Then you want to take it up a notch and give it a bit of a drone to your sub bass. Well, it squares your shape right there. There you go. That's your drone. Very, very nice. And if you want it to be more bassy than a square wave, what could you do? You could adjust the PWM, the pulse width modulation of the square wave, and you could have a pulse wave. See, it's a little lower than the square pulse. Square. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then you have an octave range of from plus four to minus four there. Dragging up and down will let you change that. You, I don't know why you'd use plus four for a sub bass, but if you had some creative reason to use the sub oscillator as your third oscillator, oscillator C, that will come in handy if you want to get really off the dial. And then, because you're getting off the dial, you might want to actually pan your sub bass. So you've got a panning option there. I would not recommend using any kind of panning whatsoever on your sub bass because sub bass is omnidirectional. That's because the wavelengths are too big to give a fuck about the direction. Anyway, now, a little trick. Uh, my preferred bass for this is actually the sine wave overdriven or clipped. And what I sometimes like to do for my punchy bass presets is I route, I turn one of these LFOs into a envelope like that, and I route it to level. And where are we? And we will be mapping it the other way. As you can see, it's now cutting the level over time. As in, so that means that any any preset that I have will only have sub bass at the beginning and the loudest right on the attack of the note gives it a thumpy thickness, thumpy fatness, and it makes it really nice. So that's a little, uh, little tip there. Let's move on to the noise oscillator. Disable sub. Goodbye. Kill. Oh, the noise oscillator. I love this oscillator. The noise oscillator has an enable button, as you can see. It also has a big selection menu, multi-category. It's really cool. It has all sorts of analog noises in here. Um, you've got alpha circuit noise. You've got uh, pink noise, white noise. You've got bright white noise. You've got Juno 60 noise. You've got Juno 106 chorus noise, that would be the noise plus chorus on top, uh, which is just a recording taken probably straight from the Juno 106. Got Juno 106 high pass, Juno 106 high pass with a chorus, Juno 106 by itself. Micro Korg noise, general organ noise. I don't know, that might be like B3 or who knows, some general kind of organ noise. The SH-101 noise, SID drone noise, and wine from the SID chip. I think uh, Commodore 64 has the SID chip. Uh, then you've got the 
series of attacks taken from kick drums provided, which are excellent little hammer tones to have on some of your uh, key presets that you create or even bass presets that you create might want a little bit of a kick attack on the start just to give it a bit more of a, a thump, especially those FM basses. Uh, by the way, I released a pack uh, of, on the Serum Wave series called Solid Bass. Check it out on the patchbay.io. Then Attacks Miscellaneous. It's just sampled strange noises from SFX libraries. Got claps. And these are just the attacks of a claps. And the, all these things come in handy for creative creations. And that's why noise, it, all it does is it plays a high quality mono sample along with oscillator A, B and sub. You can also filter that by selecting N under the filter. So let's talk about noise. You can insert your own noise by going to menu. Uh, if you go to menu and you go show serum presets folder, then you go to noises and you can make your own folder in there called legend, legends of whatever the hell you want to make. There, are, It's not my business. Anyway, I have one called Serum Wave. If you get my packs, I have my own custom noises there. And Steelworks is my favorite, just in case. So you create these uh, noises. Let's have a look. Okay, and so here we are with brightwhite.wav, one of the noises that the noise oscillator uses. It's a mono. It's 44, 100 hertz. It's 16 bit. And I believe that you can insert 32 bit and also higher sample rates into this oscillator with no problem. So make your own noises, very cool functionality. And so how could you manipulate the noises in the noise oscillator? Well, of course you have direct out again, bypassing the filter. Piss off. That's my bedtime thing. I'm not going to fucking bed right now. Okay, direct out, which bypasses the filter but not the envelopes or the LFO. So this button here makes the noise oscillator play only once instead of in a loop. If this is not checked, it will play in a loop, which can be handy just to get different textures into your presets. Yeah. So you hear that? Let's select one of mine. Still works. You can see it just loops. If you do this, it will only trigger once. See you later. And that would be probably useful for the kick attacks, because if you use the kick attacks without, an, that, without that enabled, then you're going to have a buzzing noise, which could be pretty cool to have with the pitch. But uh, let's not do that, let's grow up. So let's say I've go back to my Steelworks one and let's talk about this other button here, which is key tracking that makes it actually have a note. If this is not selected, all the notes on the keyboard will play the same. But if it is selected, check out the patchbay.io for all your preset needs and sample needs. Make sure you buy my packs, otherwise this might happen. It's me, fucking. I don't even want to think it in, mate. That's where I was producing fucking synth waves. They should have purchased me fucking products on the patchfade on IO. Fucking patchfade on IO. Yeah, look at me. Oh, no, fucking. I don't even have enough fucking money. I'm a heroine. Well, I'm, I might go then. Who am I? i tell you who I am. I'm a fucking preset psycho. I made so many fucking presets, my head's gonna explode. Quality presets, reasonable price. I've sold 3,400 packs online at thepatchbay.io and the reviews do not lie. There are 217 four or five star reviews and they are glowing. UD Diva, Pins One, Polysic, Lepro, Serum, J8, Cal you know the cleanest drum samples that are available online. You can go and download them right now. Crystal Clarity Drums, Pack One, Pack Two, Pack Three. They are the cleanest. I've got pads, I've got leads, I've got 
bass, I've got snares, I've got kicks, I've got hats. I've got everything you need to produce quality electronic music. The presets are handcrafted and they're going to take your music to the next level. My presets are so good that they're even up on pirate sites. 3,400 packs sold. I am the top seller on the Patch Bay and it is like that for a reason. Remember that. Check out the patchpay.io right now. Go and check out those packs. Go and grab those packs. Go and grab a lot of packs. Make me happy. I'll make some more packs and I'll make some more presets for you. You have so many quality presets at your fingertips that you will never have a creative block. Every note will. It even does chords. Then you can adjust the phase of the sample in question. Uh, so let's say if we select this FM bass one, which is just this actual DX7 bass that I created for it, it would trigger at the start of the noise because the phase is set to 0%. Let's get a bit of volume there, a bit of pitch. Let's see how the pitch, you can actually set it accurately. So I could set it 24 semitones above. That sounds cool, but what if I wanted to trigger that halfway um, and also on one shot? Well, I'd set the phase to 50% like that, and then it starts halfway. Maybe 25 and you'll just cut off the attack. Or just really just get the little tail of it. Well, how about let's not? Anyway, what's random? Well, that just randomizes the phase each time it's triggered. So. If you wanted to have 50% random, then it will be 50% random and 50% not random. That makes any sense to you? You can hear it just cutting off bits of it. If I put it fully random, now it'll just randomize the phase every time. Sometimes it even gets the tail of it. There you go. That's really cool. That just adds a bit of variance, especially if you have fairly long noises like this steel works. Let's try it with random. It's just going in a different place each time. Cool. You can pan it to the right. You can pan it to the left. You can pitch it. And also you can level it, which is really pretty damn cool. And if you want to scroll through the noises, there's a left and right arrow there to go to the next one. Uh, really cool. And that is the noise oscillator. Now I want to talk about the main oscillators as oscillator A and oscillator B are the same thing exactly. Uh, they each have a wavetable stored inside of it. There is a way to select the wavetable. You could just select it from here by clicking there. And again, you get this drop down menu from some of the stock wavetables and you can also have user wavetables. In this case, I've stolen all the wavetables out of Yuhi Hive. <laughs> I stole them, I ripped them all. <laughs> so yeah, really lovely wavetables, by the way, in Hive. That's pretty much what makes Hive sound good, is its wavetables. Well, we just took it over to Serum. They can sound better in Serum. So we got the, we got the user wavetables. And then when you edit a wavetable, then this bar here will turn blue. That's indicating that the wavetable is not yet been saved. If you want now to save it, it has this little disc appearing here in the corner. If you click that, you can type in what you want to save it as and save and recall it at any time by clicking here and going user. So that's really cool. Let's talk about the pitch settings for the oscillator. So you've got, let's get a good preset first. So you've got the octave setting, which is not dissimilar to the sub oscillator. It goes up to plus four and it goes down to neg four. You've got semitone pitch control and that goes up to 12 semitones and down to neg 12 semitones. It's really cool when you want to create a patch that involves two oscillators where it creates a chord. So like, for example, just a little quick thing here, copy A to B. Now we both have the same thing in A and B. But so let's have a look. If I was to increase the semitones here to plus seven, I should get a chordal sound. How grand is that? 
Let's have a look at fine pitch control. That's really useful for getting it to sound analog. I usually drag a bit of um, an LFO onto that to make it sound unsteady. That goes to plus 100 cents and negative 100 cents. Uh, and basically one cent is one hundredth of a semitone. So it's a little bit more fine, hence the name fine or fin. Basically, fine tuning, if it was set to 100, it will go up one semitone. If set to neg 100, it will go down one semitone. Let's try that. As I said, but coarse tuning will go really, really far and it is accurate to two decimal places. So let's have a look here. If I hold this, which is sort of really just a frequency. It's just increasing the frequency of the wave shape. In most doors, you can't have an accuracy of the frequency to more than two decimal places, but some other programs do allow three decimal places. Sadly, not in any door, really. If you know of one, please feel free to comment in the comments section. Okay, let's have a look at some of the knobs on the, on the oscillator. Um, so you have uh, the unison knob. So what that will do is it will duplicate the oscillator. So be careful. It is CPU hungry. Every single time you duplicate the oscillator and create another voice, you're basically making another oscillator occurring, the one that you can't see. So if I was to have 16 here and it turns red, it's saying you're an idiot, right? But maybe you're not, maybe you have a reason to, but generally that's just going to blur. It's going to be too many unison for a single oscillator and it's not really going to result in a better sound. It's just going to be a less accurate bit of a mess of a sound, but you know. Super saw, it might be cool for a super saw, something like that. But generally they say that seven voices for an oscillator is the sweet point, you know, because modern CPUs don't have too much trouble duplicating the oscillator seven times. And it sounds really optimal with seven unison. When you go beyond, it becomes a law of diminishing returns in terms of the aesthetic of the sound. So let's say if I had two, if I had two voices on my oscillator, it's duplicated my oscillator twice. And when I detune it, it sounds like this. That's really cool. Uh, like what, what's happening there? Well, it, it's even panning the voices. It's panning and it's altering the tune of the voices. So it's doing both. And you can set up in global up here exactly what it's gonna do. This first column here is for your oscillator A. So the range uh, of detuning would be in this case, two semitones. Let's have a look at it when it's increased to 48 semitones. Whoa, it's like THX ident, okay? Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And back to two with that. Now with width, that's about how much stereo panning is going to occur. So how much stereo width will occur with each voice. So if I put that down to none, there will be no width change when I detune. Might be required for the kind of patch you're creating. Uh, back to global, back to 100. I love width, don't you? You can also do other parameters like warp section. You can even change the wavetable position due to the, the detune. And you can also change the stack, which is also uh, making it do chords and all sorts of other stuff. So you can basically end up doing a chord in a single oscillator, unlike the way I showed you before.
So it shows you them going apart like so. If you were to have three, it would be still symmetrical, but it would have a centerpiece. That's really good because it then it allows you to blend between the additional voices and the fundamental voice or the, the initial voice. In this case, the other voices have been blended out and this is set to zero. You can barely hear them, but if you change the balance, you can actually even make the additional voices louder than the original voice too, by setting it to 100. That's pretty cool. But this sort of gives it a bit, a bit more solidarity so that it has the original voice in the middle like so, and then it's not so ultra wide. But you know, you can add some more voices and then you've got two in the middle there. If, have you seen that? Again, you're lacking that middle point. So if you go to an odd five, now we have the middle one again, except we got four either side. Pretty cool, I just love doing that, I love doing this. Oh, it's just coming into focus. This knob on the agenda here uh, is the phase knob. It's currently, if the random knob, it's important to note, if the random knob was set to zero, then the phase knob is set to 180 degrees. That means that the single voice oscillator would start at that point at 180 degrees. It would not start at the start of the wave shape. If I set it to zero degrees, it will start at the start of the wave shape. If I was to set it to zero degrees with one voice, I could also increase this random knob here and then each time it's triggered, it would start at a different place anywhere in that range that the random knob has selected. And I could select a smaller range and then it will trigger randomly anywhere within that range. And if I was to increase the voices to five, that same thing would happen to each voice. And you can put it anywhere you want. I'll put there or there. And you know, phase does matter. So think about that. Phase does matter. So wavetable position cycles between frame one of this wavetable and the last frame of the wavetable. In this case, it's 196. The maximum amount of frames in a wavetable is 256. If you click on the wavetable display, it's currently showing one frame at a time or 2D mode. If you click it, it turns to 3D mode and it projects or it almost extrudes the wavetable outwards in a 3D shape like that, highlighting in yellow the frame that is currently selected. That's pretty nice, isn't it really? And then let's just, later I'll talk about the wavetable editor, but not now. So then you've got pan, of course, if you would like it on the right then maybe you're not such a right type of person and you're a bit of a lefty. You can have it on the left. And then you got the level, which goes right down to neg negative infinity dB. Oh, sounds like a cool place to hang out. And right up to zero dB at 100%. So that's the basics of an oscillator.